welcome back to another episode of Dengarapa 2 Hopes, uh, Goodbye Despair. I almost said Hopes Academy, whatever. Are you guys ready to get started with the investigation? God, I hope so, because we're doing it anyway. We gotta, we gotta start getting the shit down. So, Nekomaru and Adai, the victim of Nekomaru and Adai, okay, aka Mechamaru. After his robotic transformation, his body was discovered in Grave Tower, which is inside the funhouse. He's hit is severely damaged and beyond repair, so that shall be considered the cause of death. I would say. Despite the fact that his arms and legs are dismembered, these limbs were actually designed to be detachable, and it seems they're, they separated due to severe impact. Aside from that, several other areas of his body are damaged. Because of this, many of the, his functions seem to have shut down. I bet most of them probably have. Yeah. His arms and legs were detachable, and it looks like they separated due to severe impact. We just went over that. Does that mean Nekomaru was repeatedly clubbed with a, some sort of weapon, or just hit with that hammer in that pedestal? But was there a reason they needed to climb him, oh, oh, club him over and over again? Uh, Monokuma file number four has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Well, let's look at the chain on the door. What is this? The door on the far back is a chain wrapped around the doorknob? It looks like it's a sturdy metal chain. It's wrapped around the doorknob from every direction, and it even has a padlock on it. Why did they do something like this? Perhaps this was used as an alternative to locking the door with a key. If that's the case, you wouldn't be able to enter this tower from the Strawberry Hall side. But I think Strawberry Hall did it. And I think that's what made it. That's a diversion. I'm positive. After all, this door should lead to Strawberry Hall. You are right. If they barred this side of the door with a chain, it would be impossible to open it from Strawberry Hall. But still, why would they need to bar the door to Strawberry Hall? Chain has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. I think it was a diversion. Along the t along the tower floor, there appear to be many lights built into the floor limiting the wall. Because of these lights, the walls and the are not of green. However, because of the light shining on the walls, the ceiling is pretty dark and light. Let's see it. Okay. I try. I wanted to click. I can't, I can't click the pedestal. Okay. An enormous hammer has been carelessly left on the floor. It look, looks like it's suspicious. It's like it's suspicious because it stands out so much. Okay. How cruel! Perhaps that hammer is the weapon that broke Nekomaru. I do believe a weapon of that size is capable of damaging Nekomaru. This hammer is the weapon. But it looks like it's too clean. It's almost like it's new or something. It is strange. Also, where did no? the killer obtain this hammer? Prior to now, I do not believe I have ever seen an object like this. Was it hidden somewhere? Good point. There's no supermarket in here. I wonder where they obtained it from. Could have been the ultimate killing weapon at the end of the game. Like the life-threatening game. Sure. Oh, now I get, I get broken killers up here. The pillar next to the door is tipped over and broken. Did this pillar break when it fell over? Not just that. There's a strange liquid on the upper section of the pillar. Is this Nekomaru's oil? This is the only pillar that's tipped over. The other one is still standing. Plus, behind me is the door to Grey Pearl. The two pillars on each side of the door haven't changed either. They're not tipped over. It's strange that the pillar is the only one that's tipped over. It might mean something. <laughs> I see, I got it. Got what? Leave it to me. This pillar is the weapon! The killer uses to beat up Coach Nekomaru, and I am with you, kind of. This huge pillar! Damn it. If you got socked by- oh, If you got socked, socked by something like this, even Coach Nekomaru wouldn't stand a chance. Yeah, well, that's impossible to be way too heavy to wield as a weapon. Now then. Hajime, grab that end over there. Huh? I'm gonna do it. We have to try it out. Obviously! Come on, hurry up! Fine. Jeez, you're more forceful than usual. You guys can't even lift that part. It's no use. Yeah. It's barely budging. Didn't I tell you? All right. If that's how it's gonna be. Uh, she gonna keep going. My body can take it. Power. Time three. No, seriously, just give it up already. Next thing you know, she throws it clear across Hi. the room. It's no use. It won't even budge. If two people can't even move this pillar, then it's impossible to use it as a bludgeoning weapon. But you could drop it on somebody. I'm just saying. Well, there's only one person who could have lifted something like this. Robocoach Nekomaru. He's definitely the only one. 
tipped over a pillar has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay, so we looked at the pillar, we looked at everything but his body so far. Mr. Sakamoto's body is cruelly broken. It looks like it's been so severely damaged that even his head was dented. That'd be a fa the fatal wound, right? But Nekomaru's robot body should have should have been durable enough to withstand any assault. Should have. For Nekomaru to be this damaged, it can only mean whoever attacked Nekomaru didn't hold back. Also, yeah, he did survive another explosion, didn't he? Without a scratch, so I don't know. That's probably not the best time to think this, but I guess Nekomaru was really transformed into a robot, huh? I was getting used to the idea, but now I think about it, robots are definitely unusual. Oh shit. Well, it doesn't matter if he was a robot or not. Either way, Nekomaru was still killed. Mm. It's definitely strange, isn't it? What is? Well? If they wanted to kill him, they could have just destroyed his head. Why did they destroy his entire body, too? Anger? Wanting food? Both options. Maybe they didn't know how to kill a robot, so they damaged him all over. Yeah. But they went against Coach Nekomaru. He ain't the type to die easily. They obviously didn't fight him head on, but even then, he wouldn't let himself leave himself open to attack. You're right. In fact, that's the biggest mystery. And Nekomaru was even stronger after he became a robot. I can't think of anyone who'd be capable of killing him. Anyway, this alone isn't enough information. I should investigate a little more thoroughly. We got this poking broad. Leg. Wire. There is a wire. There's a sturdy metal wire tied to Nakamaru's left leg. The same wire is tied to his arms. It's almost like he was bound up or something. But even if they bound him up, the killer still had to deal with a robotic Nekomaru first. Who did this? And how were they able to buy Nekomaru? Also, the tip of this wire looks like it's been tied in a loop. But what was the point of this? But a wire's been added to the good bullet sucker. The chest. The cover on his chest is open slightly, but it won't open much more because the cover's all messed up. If only Kazuichi were he was here, he might have been able to open it. Jeez, what the heck could he be doing right now? Hiding? Huh? There's something protruding from behind Nakamura's neck. Is this... Well, they could have put him to sleep. All you have to do is push his sleep button and he can't do anything against you. That's right, it's a cutting edge function that puts my other function to sleep, even if I have insomnia. Just press the goodnight button on the back of my neck and I'll be forced to enter sleep mode. I guess I should have seen that as a foreshadowing someone would target to kill him. But I didn't really do that. Maybe the killer pressed this button and made Nakamura enter sleep mode. But still, it's hard to think the killer was able to easily press a button on the back of Nakamura's neck. Even if Nakamura was ambushed, it still wouldn't be easy. Unless there was no struggle. He might have just been, yeah, go ahead, and, you know, didn't think anyone would kill him. The poor soul. The fluid flowing out of Nekomaru's body. Based on the smell, it smells like oil. It seems to be flowing heaviest from Nekomaru's head, probably because that's where the fatal blow was dealt. This oil, for Nekomaru, this might be similar to normal blood for humans, which means all this oil is just a pool of robot blood. Anyway, that's a whole lot of oil. It's not going to be easy to clean up. No, now's not the time to even worry about that. I mean, kind of, like, well, no. I hope to be out of this grape hell. I guess for now, this is all we can do to investigate Nekomaru's body. I should back off for now. Well, I've looked at everything in the room, I think. From what I can tell. But I didn't talk to everyone, I guess. Let's talk to everyone. Huh? What's this? Did you find something? Well? Um, under Nekomaru's body. No, wait. There are small rock-like fragments underneath Nekomaru's body. You didn't need to correct yourself like that. And what do you mean, rock-like fragments? See? Here, look. There are a lot of these small fragments. It's like they fell under Mechamaru's body. Well? But oddly enough, though these fragments are underneath Mechamaru's body, they are there are hardly any on top of his body at all. So yeah, it's kind of like they placed his body there. That is strange. What's strange about that? Is there a problem that they're not on top of his body? Yep. If you don't know, it's okay. It probably means they're not that important. Yeah, I'm kind of on the side of they're important. It's like that fell over after and he was placed on it. I don't know. Well, if you put it like that, now I can't help but think they're important. Killer fragments. What do you got, Miss Nevermind? I see. Um, in this case, 
cases Monokuma Vile, there is no written time of death, right? Didn't that happen when Ibuki and Hiyoko died too? Oh, did it? But the reason the time of death wasn't mentioned when those two had died was because the time of death was key to the mystery surrounding their murder. Could that be the case this time too? <coughs> I doubt it. Well, no, I kind of doubt it. I think it's just we're going to find the time on his clock, his internal clock that he was so proud of. Um. By the way, I'd like to confirm this just in case. Ultimately, it is... Is it safe to assume that the Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower are the same building? Well, that's the only thing we can think of. Even when we experimented with Shiaki's handbook and left it in the Grape Tower, it still showed up in the Strawberry Tower. So it's the same building, girl. The reason each tower's wall is different colors is because the floor lighting is changing the colors. The reason Usami's floor portrait is different in each tower is because it's merely a projection. Yeah, that should be the case. Then... Then it is decided the two towers are the same building. Which means the scene of the crime is simultaneously the Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower. Grape Tower and Strawberry Tower are the same building. How does that pertain to Nekomaru's murder? Again, it's because I can almost guarantee a man did the murder. Right? And a man is in Strawberry Tower. I'm the only man not. So the three women in me are out. So the automatically the killer goes to Nagito, who it's not gonna be. And then so it could be Tanaka, it could be Soda, it could be Kuzuryu. That is my three people. And just because I don't want it to be Soda, I think this was Tanaka. But it's more than likely Soda. If it's Sonya, I Sonya is the only female I can see it being. So if it does turn out to be a female, it's gonna be Sonya. Because I also can't... See, because they gave her too much of a an out to be the killer. She wanted food so bad she killed the person that she liked. It's not gonna go that way. It can't. They did that with Danganronpa 1, they're not gonna do that with Danganronpa 2. I don't think. Because my Zono only did like herself, but... Good old, whoa, no, I can't remember his name. Makoto, there we go. Makoto loved Mizono, and he had full faith in Mizono, and that's why Mizono tried to kill him. I don't think we're gonna have something similar. I don't. Did you find anything? It looks like you haven't found anything yet. Leave it to me. We need clues, right? I'll remember something, so just wait for it. Mm. Looks like this is gonna be a little hard. Yeah. Oh, I remember. There is something I thought was weird. Oh, it happened early in the morning. You're going back that far? Come on, you noticed it too, right? You heard that rumbling sound. Rumbling. I did. God blam. What? what was that sound just now? Was it an earthquake? But I didn't feel the ground move. I guess I'm just thinking too much. Well, that was the pillar falling. Um... Obvious. I was sleeping pretty heavy, so I wouldn't think about how hungry I was, but that noise woke me up. I ran into my room without thinking, and after I did that, then what happened? I didn't see anything, and it looked like the others didn't come out of their rooms either. I felt pretty dumb for being the only one who came out, so I went back to my room and fell back asleep. In the end, I never found out what that sound was, but it's been on my mind for a while. You know that you mentioned it, it does seem strange. Just what was that sound? You don't know either. Well, I should tell you in more detail. When I ran out of my room, I remember... Well, I happened to glance at the lounge clock. It said it was around 5.30 a.m. Did you be able to find a anything with that info? Probably that the murder took place around 5.30. I didn't think that rumbling noise happened that early in the morning. But I'm not really sure if that noise pertains to the incident or not. Why? What the hell? I went to the trouble of remembering that and you've got nothing? Jeez, you're so damn useless. She seems agitated. But that's understandable. Now we have Akane's account. I guess for now I've checked out everything in this place that caught my attention. What is it? You seem lost in thought. Mm -hmm. Well... The final dead room. The final dead room. What the heck? Why are you breaking up that place all of a sudden? So... With a hammer on the floor, the chain wrapped around the door at the far back, and the wire that tied up Nakamaru. All the evidence at this crime scene consists of things we've never seen inside this building, doesn't it? But as long as we can't leave, then there's no doubt that they came from somewhere within this building. So that's what you mentioned. Oh, so that's why you mentioned the final dead room. Monokuma said that beyond that room, there's the ultimate weapon in a place called the Octagon. Yep. 
Yeah, so if we think of that place, like an armory, then that's where the killer obtained their tools, right? Then... If so, let us go confirm it. No, that's dangerous. If you go in there, you have to play the life-threatening game. Well... Then I'll be the one who tries to confirm it. She's good at games. What are you saying? You were the only one who said that place was dangerous, right? You... Man, it's noisy. I can't focus at all with all this noise. Sorry. It's not like that. Hmm? It's not you guys. There's a sound that's been ringing since before the investigation started. I hear no ringing. A ringing sound since before the investigation? That reminds me. You've been mentioning that sound for a while, haven't you? Hey, hey. Akane, what kind of sound is it? Um... It's like this high-pitched alarm clock sound. It's probably ringing from upstairs. Could it be... Maybe it's better if we go check out that sound first? Uh, mm. Are you gonna go check it out? Then you guys go. Uh, I'll stay here. Then... I shall wait here as well. Please be careful, you two. Sonya's okay, but... How come you're not going, Akane? Hey. Well, that sound is annoying, and I don't really feel like leaving. Hey, hey. Hajime, it's okay if it's just the two of us. Come on, Akane. She said she wants to... Well, come on. Oh, so come on. Akane said she wants to stay here. Huh? Oh, I get it. She she doesn't want to leave Nekomaru's side. I don't know if she's actually aware of that or not. Yep. Let's go, Hajime. Yeah, if you say so. I mean, I'll go check it. I should get out of here for now. I'll go check out the sand. I trust Sonya and Akane for now. Especially Akane. Well, I know. That's like the phone. It's definitely the phone. Not an alarm. Phone just going off the fucking hang. See? Jeez, it's so noisy. It looks like that phone is ringing. The phone, huh? I guess I'll answer. Is it gonna be soda? Let's see. Just pick up the receiver and press the strawberry button, right? Damn right. Oh, it's Kuzurio. Okay, well that makes you. That's good. That makes sense. Oh, you finally answered. That voice is that you for you, Hiko? Jeez. Jeez. Do you know how long the phone is ringing? I was getting worried that no one would pick up. So, what are you guys doing? Are you? Are you all still in Strawberry right. House? Even if we wanted to go over there, we can't. Looks like someone broke the damn elevator. It's not moving at all. And we can't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall because the door button there is broken too. So basically, we're sitting ducks here. Not only is the elevator broken, but the Strawberry Hall door button is broken too. Hey, bastard. Hey, are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. Anyway, everyone in Strawberry House is safe, right? Yeah. We're safe, but we can't find Nekomaru anywhere. Do you know anything? Didn't you hear the body discovery announcement earlier? Damn it. So that's what it was. Shit! Why did it have to be Nakamaru? He just came back to us. Where was he killed? Grape Tower. When I went there this morning, he was already... I see. I see. Grape Tower. If the door to Strawberry Hall wasn't broken, we'd be able to enter the tower and... Holy shit, that's it! The killer broke the elevator and the Strawberry Hall door. Probably. So they could split everyone up and prevent us from doing a proper investigation. Dumbass. Damn it, that dirty bastard. What about another way? Is there any other way you guys can come to this side? Oh yeah. I guess we just have to let Kazuichi handle it. He said he'd take care of the elevator. I guess he's our only hope right now. You're right. Besides, if he doesn't stand out now, when the hell will he, right? Like... Based on what Kazuichi said, it's going to be hard for him to fix the strawberry hall door without parts. But he said he might be able to do something about the broken elevator. Well, we're waiting. Are you guys going to be okay? Damn right. Yeah, we'll head over as soon as Kazuichi fixes the elevator. Until then, it's up to you bastards. Well, I've got all the information I'm gonna get. I think. Hey, hey. But oh well. So the call came from Strawberry House? Apparently the others can't come over here because the elevator is broken. And so is the door. But also, the door is not broken, it just changed shut. Putting that out there. There's no doubt this is the killer's doing. They prevented the others from coming to the crime scene. As long as the elevator is out of commission, those guys won't be able to investigate. But that's not all. For some reason, even the door button to Strawberry Hall is broken too. Huh? The door button to Strawberry Hall? Um. Then that door... Is it blocked from both sides? There's a sturdy chain time to route it from the inside, and if the button is already broken on the outside, then... Yeah, that seems to be the case. Mm. Why did the killer need to block both sides of the door? Both sides, I don't know. I'm not sure, but there is something strange about that. I would like to investigate that in more detail, but... I get chaining... Okay, hold on. 
I guess if you broke it first and then you went back over to Grape Tower. Okay, I don't know where the elevator's sitting right now, I guess. If the elevator's sitting in Strawberry House, I would think that the murderer got stuck in Grape Tower after they broke the Strawberry button and then chained it shut. But no, you would have had to chain it shut from Grape Tower. You can only chain it shut from Grape Tower. Does that make it a female that did this kill? Fuck. Because you could only chain it from Grape Tower, but at the same time, you could only break the strawberry button from Strawberry Side. So they were on all kinds of sides during this whole thing. Basically. No matter what. Because you can only do so many things from so many sides. But also, to get the weapon, you had to be on Strawberry Side. Because we think it was in that game. God, I don't know. This is why I love these games, though. Makes me think. If we can't come over here, then we can't go over there. Which means for now, it's impossible to check the final dead room. I'm not entirely comfortable with you going over there, but regardless, it's impossible now anyway. Apparently, because Weech is repairing the elevator, all we can do for now is uh, put our hope in him. You're right. But Monokuma isn't going to wait. I doubt we have that much time before the glass trial starts. I hope Kazuichi can fix it soon. If not, it's going to be trial time. Hey, are you even listening? Hey, bastard. Hey, are you listening? Oh. Damn right. Nagito, I'm talking to you. Oh, we're on that side. Never mind, I get it now. We, we're Nagito now? Huh? Jeez. Don't call me. I figured you weren't even listening. Sorry, I was just thinking. <laughs> you were probably thinking of something messed up, weren't you? But I've been listening to you. Nekomaru was killed, right? Then that body discovery and that's what was referring to him. Damn it. We're playing as Nagito at the moment. Okay. Out of everyone here, you just had to be Nekomaru. Damn it. After what he went through to come back to us. Damn it. How pitiful. It's sad amount to being killed twice. Truly, he was a man burdened by terrible misfortune. Hey. Okay, so now that we know the situation over there, is it alright if I go ahead and fix the elevator? Uh, is it that all you... Oh, is it alright if you wait a little bit before you do that? We should... Did you call for me? Get the Monokuma file, alright? <laughs> Whoa, he's here. Now then. I see you guys have noticed that the incident has taken place, so this is for you. Red bean bread and milk. Woo! And there's a bonus item. It's... Monokuma file! Well, yeah, they better be too. Do your Come on, satisfy your hunger with this, and do your very best on the investigation. Why is the Monokuma file being treated like a bonus item? <laughs> Whatever, man. Let's just eat. Eating should come first right now. Damn right. You're right. It's okay if you guys eat, but can you hear me out while you're at it? What, do you what is it? Well, I was thinking about what we should do, and I want to discuss it. I really hope Tanaka's the killer, because you feel like the killer, and you just came off real mad about me Nagito trying to talk. Even so. Thanks to the killer, we can't even go to the crime scene. We have to wait till Kazuichi fixes the elevator. True, there is no doubt that the killer is responsible, but it seems as though they made a huge mistake. There's no way the symbols of hope will give up because of this little setback. There's no way everyone will just cross their arms and wait for the class trial to start. We need to do everything we can on our end to prepare for the class trial, right? Well, yeah. It seems that we too shall begin the investigation on our end, though it remains unclear how much we can do. <laughs> Is this acceptable? If I show my serious side, things will not end with mere child's play. I'm so glad I knew you guys were pumped up from the start. How beautiful. Even though you guys are suffering from despair, I can see that you guys are still fighting for hope. Ah, such beauty. There is no higher honor for me than to investigate this murder with you guys. So we need to be grateful toward Nekomaru for becoming the foundation of this hope. Well, regardless, whose side should I be on for this case? The killer? Or the rest of you guys? I must make sure I face this case's mystery properly if I'm going to find out which side is the true hope. And giggles. Investigate. Hey, you guys, why don't you try arranging the sequence of events in this case? You know, so we can properly understand the situation we're in. Alright. 
So I guess in the next episode, because I am just going to cut it here a little short for an investigation episode from me. Um, let's just keep going down the slots, I guess. Um, but I would like to just cut both sides and do their own episode and then go from there. Um, so hope you guys enjoyed this episode. What are your thoughts? Like, where do you think this case is going? Who do you think might have done it? My gut tells me Tanaka. Because I think he's smart enough to break the elevator, break the button, chain the door, and make it look like somebody in Grape House did it. Because to me, that's what it looks like. Because that final chaining of the door, and, it, and the way the body was placed, makes it to me look like somebody in Grape House did it. But I think that's what they were aiming for. So I wholeheartedly believe it's one of these four men. And Tanaka is the only one I can see it being because Kuzuryu. Well, I mean, for you, Hiko, I should say, because that's easier. He had, he's been redeemed. And Kazuichi, I just don't want it to be him, even though it wholeheartedly could be him. He could break an elevator easy. Mechanic. I don't know. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next episode. Take care till then. Bye bye.